nibbles. J-Dog back to answer more goddamn questions. Before we get to the questions, though, God damn it, we got some shit to show on camera because, fuck, it's been raining over the doghouse. First and foremost, got in last night. Dog spun the LP twice already, of course. Now, I did pre-listen it on YouTube because I prefer not to listen to shit on the tube. But, um, like, for a full, honest checkout of stuff I like. But pre-order was late as fuck because the, uh, the box set. And uh, I already heard the few previous tracks. Like Sonata's Horrenda is probably my favorite goddamn song on the album. Um, that was one of the uh, songs that were released as a single on YouTube with the music video. Badass as fuck, goddammit. That's the last song on the album. I finally got my copy in the goddamn box set from Van Records. The New Attic. So uh, what they told me on camera, too, is all three albums have a box set for it. I would like to get the other two on box set as well. So if anybody has them, whether it's 300 copies or so, open this goddamn thing up, show you up. Um, it's Nick, because it's numbered. You just, this is 133 out of 34. 133 out of 330, 333. And I think he said there's already 300 copies in all. But um, yeah, it's nice as shit. Comes with super slick fucking die cut back patch. All their albums will like this too. Oh, and I, I bought the album, uh, the first album, The Invocation again. Because there's a gold splatter vinyl. Uh, I only have the black vinyl. Um, and then on Sanctimonious, I have the white vinyl for that. But all of them come with these super fucking nice goddamn books. Uh, I don't know if Van Records does it for every band they put out. Because uh, I don't own a ton of other Van Records stuff. I mean, all this stuff is quality. But, I mean, it's like elaborate as fuck. So... I have to admit, like, the packaging on this, it, like I said, he did it on the first two albums, too, is beyond fucking nice. Fucking poster. And I gotta say, yeah, if you haven't heard this album or the band general, I would probably say this is this is definitely gonna be the best album of 2024 or in the running. Uh, we'll get something that came in on Hell's Goddamn It Up next. It's in the fucking running. But uh, if this is not gonna be my favorite album of 2024, it, it's in the top three for sure. But I, honestly, I think it's probably number one. Um, don't miss out on those kind of first two albums either. So and as far as where the albums rank, I would say Sanctimonious is probably still my favorite. And then this one and the first one, you can flip a coin. It's not because Sanctimonious is necessarily the best. I just, for the, some of the song, probably the most songs that hit me the most on there. But for example, like on this album, one of my favorite Attic songs, for sure, in top five now, would be uh, the, the last song, Sonata's Horrenda. Um, on Invocation, one of my fucking favorite songs, top five, is Join the Cub. So, it's got the fucking bay. There's not, like, you need all goddamn three albums. And I still need to get that goddamn demo, too. I think I'm using fucking Discogs or whatever. I think there's a vinyl for it. Dog needs a vinyl on a goddamn CD. Um, it's a different recording. It's got mostly the songs from the first album, but it's got one or two songs that are already on the album. So technically, my poser ass hasn't heard them yet. So, and as far as, like I said, 2000s bands, I would say this is probably my favorite band of all time as far as bands that started from 2000 up, unless I'm completely forgetting somebody. Like even bands like Severe Torture and shit that I'm a big, big fan of. Um, who else? Who do I like a lot that started in 2000 up? Lurking Corpses, that's coming up next, God damn it. Um, what the fuck am I forgetting? Oh, the, the obvious, I talk about all the time, the newer bands, the Molders, the Melting Rots, Caustic Flames, the New Desolus, all that shit. You know, all bands that started in 2000s, you know, Abysmal Lord. Um, of course, I'm forgetting tons. I'm trying to think, like, yeah, some like bands like Regurgitation, Devour, Molested Cap, that, that's, they're, they're on the cuff, late 90s, right? A band like Aborted was probably like 99, I think the first album was 99, 99, 2000. Hey, the fuck who? Any bands, bands that are definitely, you know, 2000 up. I would say this, I would say this is probably my fucking favorite band. I would, I would, I would, yeah. I mean, it, it, if I had to dig, dig, maybe I'd have to fucking look, but hell no, I, I'd have to say so. This is a pulled out goddamn poster. Comes with the CD and so LP, cassette, and CD. I didn't even open up the CD yet. Like, I literally just got this last night. Brought it in the warehouse so I can uh, spin it while I'm doing orders. Then I'll take it back home. I'll listen to the goddamn, I'll put the CD on the car, way back goddamn home. Listen to it for the next goddamn week straight in the car. Spin the fucking LP at home too. Um, just drill on that goddamn fucking head. See, like I said, shit that you like that you want to listen to again and again, that's what you fucking buy, right? 
So it's nice how they did this too with this foam where, uh, you know, the fucking uh, goddamn uh, the CD and the cassette aren't just flopping around and they're like a goddamn motherfucking fish, right? So very nice how they did it. So it's the LP, dog. It's coming, brah, brah. So I'm assuming all the box sets just came out on this red vinyl, which was very suiting for the Encore too. This blood red fucking fiery looking really fits the cover. And then uh, I think there's two other colors, like as far as we just get the regular LP. I know there's a black vinyl and um, forget what else. But as far as vinyl wise, I just bought this. What about a picture this too? But guys don't like goddamn picture this. Don't know why. Look at that fucking Totally fits the fucking bill. Take notes, internal bleeding. Oh, dude, there's even print. Dude, this is quality as fuck. There's even print. The their little cross thing is inside both. Can't see on here, but inside both pockets of the gatefold, there's print inside. God damn. Spare no expense. In the back. Total fucking ten. 666 smashed fucking poser ass canoe skulls. Release of 2024. It's going to be hard to beat it. New Deicide might. But in all honesty, I don't even know if the new Deicide might. Because, for example, I only heard two songs, which I like both very much. Um, Bear, Bear the Cross with Your Christ was the best song. Sever the Tongue, I liked it, but it was, you know, it wasn't like one of my top, you know, 15 Deicide songs or anything. It was no trick or trade or anything like that. It wasn't that goddamn good. But I was like, yeah, it's a good DSI song. I mean, if you go, even on later albums, you could go to uh, To Hell With God. I mean, uh, Conviction's a better song. Go In the Minds of Evil, Trample the Cross is a better song. So, But it was still a good song. So we'll see how the rest is. But I mean, I mean, it's cut the fucking shit. The new is going to be in the top three for goddamn sure. And again, so what it's looking like is probably going to be in this fucking order. As far as my favorite releases of the year. New Attic, New Deicide, Lurking Corpses. They're gonna be they're gonna be duking it out. Uh, so that's gonna be they're gonna be fighting for second and third place. I, those are probably my top three unless something comes up. But I do this. Twenty twenty four is looking pretty goddamn good. I must fucking say, um, because definitely better than twenty twenty three. Because on twenty twenty three, what other albums that I really that I this is pretty much say really liked that I did like that came out that year as far as new albums. The new cannibal, the new new fetus, the new white death, the new satanic war master. That was four albums that I brand new studio albums that I picked up. Was none slaughter red as the color? Is that 2023 or 2022? How do you not know, dog? Because the goddamn pressing times on vinyl and CD were so goddamn drastically different. And the shit borders together like a motherfucker. But if that was 2023, then that as well. But I think that I think the CD might have been 2022. But still, I think all in all, 2024 is going to be a, a better year. You know, you have the Desolus, which I highly recommend getting that. That is thrash with sack. We've already been over this. Um, Air Dog. Well, you didn't say don't say it, so I don't, don't think it's a goddamn secret. The new Mulder is coming out on uh, whatever label they're on. Uh, the new Mulder album in like around October, September, October. I think he's shooting for September. Show me the cover art. Looks badass as fuck. Uh, I have not heard the album. Um, but I have high hopes for it because the first two, I mean, bo I, both albums I like very, very much so. Uh, I might even like the second one even more. At first I thought like, yeah, Vanished Cadaver is probably better. But as I listen to more, I think I like Engrossed in K. Uh, I probably like that one more. So track record is equal. I mean, it's only two records. <laughs> they got better and better. Um, so I have high expectations for that. And then theoretically a new King Diamond which as long as all the songs are as good as Masquerade of Madness, now that's going to be fighting for top three too. If, that, if all the songs are as good as Masquerade of Madness, because that song was, I thoroughly enjoyed that. But I don't have high hopes for the new Fate, don't me wrong. I'm, I'm not even going to just check it out. I will buy it because I don't have a Reversal Fate record. But I'm like, I've looked, I said, dude, I thought that song Jack of Salzburg was kind, kind of fucking stunk. I mean, it wasn't like shut this off, this is junk. But it was hanging out like, like, what are some other Fate songs that don't suck, but they're the turds of the catalog? Dead Time, off Into the Unknown. Half of the title track, Into the Unknown, starts off jamming as fuck, and it's got that rear, 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 so, surfer fucking, just get on a surfboard fucking wanker shit, where it trails off into the goddamn who knows what. And I was like, this is fucking lame. So, half of that song, and... The Mad Era, let's call it like it is. That song's not overly awesome. It doesn't stink, but I mean, it's the worst goddamn song in the album. Let's call it like the fuck it is. Um, 
Yeah, I would say those are the turdiest songs in the fake catalog. But, but honestly, I think Jack Will Salzburg is probably, uh, Dead Time is pretty turdy. I would say Jack Will Salzburg was probably the, mo the second most turdy fate song. So hopefully that's the only turd on the album, and the rest is all as good as fucking Dead Again or Nine. I'm like, I mean, shit, if it's as good as Dead Again or Nine, that might even be album. Of the that'll, be, that'll be fighting first place with that, goddammit. But I don't have high hopes. Like I said, I was like, dude, this song kind of stinks. Like, if you think this is what's jamming, uh, I'm afraid to hear the rest of it. But nonetheless, goddamn it, we'll see. Anyways, like again, fighting for second, third fucking place. CDs are fucking in. God damn it, I fucking told you. The new lur lurking corpses, god damn it. Lurking after midnight. Make sure to check out my goddamn interview. I did what, close to a year ago now with goddamn Von Gould, the singer of the band, the, the head honcho, the nuts and bolts. Um, Check out that fucking cover art, too. Slick ass fuck. That's what the actual guys look like on stage. They have their own kind of gimmick image. It's like, not only are they the image of the band live, they're the image, like comic book characters that... That's what's cool about it, man. It's like they're their they're their own artwork on their album covers and in their whole image. And then when you see them live, it's like the comic book characters walking off the pages, going on stage. Hence again, dude, sick of these dumbass fucking shorts, baseball hats, sports jerseys, Browns t-shirts, Raiders shirts, an Adidas shirt, just going up there with a goddamn and you can sculpt it with an amber crown and fish while you're fucking at it. Ball cap on. Get that bullshit off, man. Putting on a show. They fucking know. God damn, there's art for days in here too, god damn it. Looks sharp as fuck. Mm -hmm. I must say so myself. And again, that's why, you know, it makes it nice. You got all the lyrics in there. You got art. Makes it like, yeah, why the fuck do you want to own a digital download? See, this is what they look like when they walk off the goddamn comic book pages. Totally fit the, fit the bill. You get these fucking New Yorkers. These slam death metal fucking goddamn homos that look fucking just ghetto as fuck. Look like they're going to go shoot some goddamn hoops. Surely not go tear it up on stage and play some metal. Yep. Corpses blow those, blow those goddamn slammers away. Send them off to the fucking morgue in a body bag with toe tags on. And even the goddamn disc looks sharp. This has got cool-ass fucking horror art for days. Every piece, dude, every panel. It's not just a black background. It's got awesome fucking artwork. Albums all killer. No goddamn filler. I even like this better than the last album. Um, Where does it rank, then? Lust for Blood is my favorite, but at the same time, it's a little unfair because that was the first one I heard. That's their second album. Lust for Blood. Probably 23 Details of Terror, which is the first album. I like this one next. Smells Like the Dead. And then the last album. And again, that doesn't mean the last album sucks. Uh, the last album was Working for the Devil. It's fucking fantastic. It's just, when you do this ranking... Somebody's got to be first. Somebody's got to be last. And I have no problem doing that because it's like, just like, for example, I just, as you guys know, big bodybuilding fan, you go to the Olympia, right? The Olympia is literally the top guys in the world. It's the Super Bowl. They're all champions. To get to the Olympia, you have to win a professional show to qualify to go. So it's all champions. Well, guess what? Somebody's first and somebody's last. The guy that's dead last is still one of the top 15 guys in the entire fucking world. But somebody's got to be first, somebody's got to be last. That's how I rank out. When you get these, oh, I don't know, fucking dick in the mouth. Like, just give me a fucking answer, man. When the bands can't do it for themselves, you do. Somebody's got to be first, somebody's got to be last. If somebody held a fucking gun to your head, trust me, you'd have an answer to that. So give me a goddamn answer I can use. So that's it. But they're all banger as fuck. Every song on here is killer, dude. Even the lyrics are fucking killer. Sing along fucking. It's horror punk mixed with heavy metal, thrash, and death metal. Even the goddamn ballad, Black Dahlia, is fucking great on here, goddamn it. Lyrics are about horror, Satan, necrophilia, just all good fucking, just dark metal, horror punk fucking topics. What more could you goddamn want? So, this is Dog, probably second favorite release of the entire year, 2024. Um, highly recommend it. As far as I'm concerned, if you don't like lurking corpses, you're, you're fucking banging dudes. I don't know what else you could possibly be a dude. That's just stupid as fuck. I can totally understand if you say, I don't like incantation, I don't like the tish. 
I can see that. Like coming up to me with a straight fucking face saying you don't like lurking corpses, again, automatically assume you're fucking banging dudes. It's, could be wrong. Just what I assume, though. It's, yeah. Both go hand in hand. That makes sense. Makes sense to me. Next on the goddamn list, Thrive Same Goddamn Day. I don't even know if I talk much about this band on the camera, but I am actually a pretty big fan. Now, it's not going to be the top three of favorite releases of the year, but it's fucking, honestly, top fucking release of the year of fucking punk shit, I would say. Granted, I haven't heard a whole lot of other punk shit. And uh, the first album was great. We put it out. And I think I own all their goddamn other seven inches. Um, most of them. Those ones that I was collecting, it's all fucking good. I like the lyrics. Like the vocals, just metal goddamn fucking punk. So from what I understand, the nuts and bolts is fucking uh, Jimmy. I met him briefly. He used to do the band Blood Wolf, which is a good band as well. They did one full length. We didn't put that out. Dog owns it, of course. It's a good fucking metal punk as well. Uh, a little bit more melodic and shit than this. And we did, we did a split with Barbados. Blood Wolf Barbados, or was it Blood Wolf Abigail? We did a couple split seven inches. Um, those are fucking great. Then they did one or two uh, splits, Blood Wolf. One seven inch on their own, because I bought it at the actual show. It was Blood Wolf and Toxic Holocaust and like, shit, what was that, 2003, 2004? As a matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was Crucified Mortals. Blood Wolf and Toxic Holocaust. I'm pretty sure that was a lineup. I could be mistaking the shows, but I think that's what it was. That was the first time I saw a Toxic Holocaust. He was like, oh, 03, 04. And yeah, Blood Wolf played. Remember, there was the chick fucking America playing guitar. And I talked to her. She says she was at the merch stand. That's where I bought the seven inch from. I think I bought the CD there too. Or maybe I had the CD beforehand of the album. And uh, asked her her name. She told me, I was like, is that your actual real fucking name? Yeah. Who fuck names your goddamn kid America? <laughs> Gonna name my kid fucking goddamn Spain. <laughs> Guess you can. Just that first time I ever heard that guy. You know, it's, anyways, fucking Jimmy went on nuts and bolts with this band too. I'm assuming he's goddamn nuts and bolts. But went on and started another goddamn uh, punk metal band. It's Rotten UK, goddamn it. Just their brand new studio album. Which, dude, the first album, that's been a while. Um, quality as fuck, good as fuck. Uh, first listen, jam the socks off. Uh, when I first put it on, I already listened to it about three times. Big, big, big fucking fan. If you like that, yeah, punk and metal combined, uh, it's fucking great. I, I love their image, love their logo. Um, I think this cover's fucking badass. Uh, now, the image, I gotta say, too, that they're, the reason I like it is because it's, it's 80s as fuck. It's like Motley Crue mixed with goddamn just total punks. I'm not gonna lie. The one, the one, the one here, I'm not sure if it's a chick or a fucking dude. <laughs> the one in the middle of the blonde, you guys, you be the sniper. It's like, I don't know, you're like, no homo. It's kind of a good looking dude, but at the same time, it's kind of a good looking chick. <laughs> Go either way, I guess, right? The rest of the guys, they look like, uh, they fit the bill, God damn it. Yeah, especially for like, yeah, punk and metal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool ass fucking layouts, logo, everything. The art, aesthetic. Mm -hmm. yeah, again, sending those goddamn slammer bozos just with their fucking droopy ass fucking shorts, backwards caps, and goddamn gold necklaces, bling bling, and maybe a suffocation shirt. So that's pushing it. Insert with the lyrics. So you get gatefold and insert. Comes with a poster too. Not busting out, but you guys gonna know what a goddamn poster looks like. There's a hundred on black vinyl, and the dot one dog picked up is this color. I thought it came out slick as fuck. Probably fits the cover and shit like that. Um, so if you're a cabal, uh, black metal guy, I want to listen to fucking Moonblood, Vlad Tepes, and Mutilation. Definitely don't bother. If you're only listening to shit, shit, brown, brown, regurgitation, lividity, cockball, torture, devourment, don't motherfucking bother. But if you like punk and you like actual real metal, I recommend at least uh, checking it the fuck out. I liked them since day one. Be honest, I'm not even thinking about hitting them up to play the goddamn J Dog show in uh, June, June 21st, 2025. So far, two bands confirmed. Uh, they're, they're both death metal bands. And purposely, what I want is I want all different, like uh, the two bands I've confirmed, like cool, but they're the exact same genre. Brutal shit. Um, but I want, I, ideally, I would like a black metal band, a thrash metal band, like a punk band, a metal punk, like for example, my first show, Lurking Corpses, right? That way it's not ear fatigue. These these, these fests where you go like, oh, it's the death fest, and it's all goddamn just brutal death metal. It's like, and even some bands I like, it's like, 
Think about that fifth band. This is ear fatigue as fuck. I'm sorry, but it is. Those black metal fest, you go over there and you look at them, like the ones in Finland and stuff. Even if there's bands I like, I'm like, dude, this is going to get old as shit. I'm like, I don't want to hear this black metal for fucking eight hours straight. I'm like, this is getting a little ear fatigue. If it was just nothing but fucking thrash, I'd be like, yeah, all right. I kind of want to hear some, let's throw on the goddamn tish. Let's throw on some fucking severe torture. You know what I mean? I, I like to switch it up. Um, that's the plan for the show. However, I can't guarantee that that's going to be the uh, result because <laughs> I'm at the mercy of who says yes, who says no, too. Um, costs, everything like that. But I'm thinking about asking fucking Ron UK. Uh, let's see what those goddamn homeboys say because they're drivable, too. Where are they from? Like, like, aren't they from New York? Or, I think they're from uh, Philly. Don't call me on that, but I think that's where they're goddamn fucking from. So that's what's new at goddamn Hells. Well, other than the attic. And as far as the attic, well, as Hells got in stock, we do not have it in stock. Will we get in stock? Pole chasey boy. Um, did he did he order him, dog? <laughs> Who the fuck knows? He says he did, but did he? I don't fucking know. Never know around here. I ain't got time to fucking babysit and hold hands and follow up on every goddamn thing. I told him when I pre-ordered my well, no, this is after I, pre I pre-ordered this shit a a while ago, like two months ago. Um, maybe a little less than two months ago. Yeah, probably, yeah, probably about two months ago. Um, but a, a month ago for sure, I told him about uh pre-order the uh new attic. Get like, I don't know, 20 CDs, 20 LPs. I said okay. Now, is that okay? It's done. I don't fucking know. So, but nonetheless, again, I have no fucking vested interest in this shit. That shit, I see, I'm just showing you the goddamn shit I like. If I, have, if I wanted to show shit to sell shit, I got all kinds of fucking crap I could dust the cobwebs off to try to sell. Like, I'm showing you shit I like. You go check it on YouTube for free if you fucking want. Or if you're like, oh yeah, dude, forgot about that band. They're a banger. Go on over the goddamn hells. We have it all except the attic, and hopefully we'll get that too. Because uh, just goddamn it, I'd rather pull that than some dumbass fucking Russian black metal bullshit that can't read, pronounce, fucking don't know what it is. And you put it on, it's the most Stalag listening fucking ass fucking noise shovels banging in a garage bullshit I've ever fucking heard. Why the fuck do we have this in stock? It'll be almighty motherfucking attic. Makes no goddamn sense. But nonetheless, we at least have the goddamn rotten keg and the fucking lurking corpses. And as far as I'm concerned, you motherfucking need them. Counts what you serve, you know what we're gonna do. But the guy by skin is a bit of the morning way to die.